In this video, I'll walk you through how to create a stylized bridge using Blender for modeling, sculpting, and UVs, and then bring the model into Substance Painter for texturing. In the final step, we'll take everything back into Blender for a simple render. Follow along to learn how you can make this stylized bridge just like this one. The first step was creating a low poly blockout of the bridge. At this stage, I wasn't concerned with topology. My goal here was to establish the silhouettes and main shapes for the final model. This blockout of the mesh will later be discarded, but it's crucial as a base to trace over when creating the actual pieces. Once I had the block out, I began creating a set of modular pieces that would later form the full bridge. I built a series of brick walls designed to snap together seamlessly, making it easy to build longer sections later on. Modularity is key when constructing assets like this one. I also modeled trim sections for the top of the bridge, a reusable set of stair pieces, and individual bricks for the arch. My original plan was to use these pieces as the final low poly models, but I ended up replacing them after sculpting. I'll explain why later in this video, so stick around. With a good set of base meshes ready, I jumped into sculpting. You can use either ZBrush or Blender for this. I went with Blender, as its sculpting tools work really well for stylized models. Using the remesh function, I increased the poly count of each model. It's really straightforward, just press R to adjust the voxel size, and then press Ctrl R to apply the remesh. One brush I find specifically helpful for bricks and stylized forms is the scrape brush, which I used to break up the hard edges and give the bricks more visual interest. For surface details, I used my custom stylized rock brush set. If you're interested, there's a link in the video description. These brushes are great for rocks, but also work really well on models like this one. I used the same workflow for all parts. Remesh, used the scrape brush for the edges, and applied the stylized brushes for the surface texture. After sculpting, it was time to create the low poly versions. As I mentioned earlier, I originally planned to use the base meshes, but the shapes had changed enough during sculpting that I had to remake them. Why? Because when the high poly and low poly models don't match well, you can get baking artifacts during the texture baking process. There are two options here, manual retopology or decimation. Since this is a hard surface asset and won't be animated, I went with decimation. Blender makes this easy with the decimate modifier. I duplicated my high poly group, renamed it low poly, and applied decimation to each piece. 
for the brick walls, I merge and remesh them at a lower resolution so they feel more cohesive. Not everything in your model needs to be a separate object, so for the walls and stairs, I kept them as a single mesh. Keep in mind, decimation won't give you good-looking topology, but for hard surface models, that's usually not a problem. Of course, you can go in and clean up unnecessary geometry afterward if needed. Once the low poly was ready, it was time to UV unwrap everything. My workflow is pretty straightforward. Apply a planar projection to reset the UVs, go through the model and mark the seams where I want the UV cuts, use the unwrap option here in Blender. Blender does a great job at unwrapping and packing the islands. After unwrapping all the pieces individually, I used Pack Islands with all objects selected to fit them neatly into the 0 to 1 space. The entire object here is going to use one texture. After doing the UVs, I exported both the high and low poly versions as FPX file. In Softens Painter, I imported the low poly model and loaded the high poly version in the bake settings. I used Bake by Mesh Name, which is really important for modular assets. This prevents ambient occlusion or normal matte from bleeding between different pieces, which can cause visual glitches later on. For texturing, I used one of my custom stylized Smart Materials, Smart Material 3.0. You can find it linked in the video description. I used this set of materials on pretty much all my stylized assets. Once I was happy with the texture, I returned to Blender to assemble the full bridge. Using the original blockout as a guide, I duplicated and placed the textured low poly pieces to build the full bridge. I had to trim and adjust some parts to make everything fit nicely. After assembling the bridge, I re-exported the model and brought it back into Substance Painter. This allowed me to tweak the material with the whole structure in view, making it easier to see how the textures behaved across the entire model. Finally, I exported the textures from Painter and imported them into Blender. I created a simple material setup, added lighting, and a backdrop. If you would like to watch the video without interruptions, you can access the full version via my Patreon or the 3DX .net premium group. Links are in the pinned comment. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more videos just like this one. And if you have any ideas or suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>